Welcome back to the Etches Collection YouTube channel. So my name's Emma and I'm from the blog M Gems, and today we're going to be talking about pliosaurs. Now a pliosaur is an extinct reptile group from the early Jurassic to the mid Cretaceous period. So you may have heard of some famous ones such as Predator X or the Liopleurodon or the Chronosaurus. Another term you may have heard is Pliosaurus. Now these all refer to pliosaurs. So pliosaurs aren't actually a single species. They're actually a group of animals just like crocodiles and dolphins are. So you actually get different kind of subspecies beneath them. So even terms like Liopleurodon is a genus name and could have multiple species categorised under it. For example, Liopleurodon ferox. And the actual pliosaur varies quite a lot. So in size, they can be anything from 5 metres to 15 metres. So I've got an amazing limb bone here from one of them. So this is an original specimen. So this is actually a pliosaur bone. So very, very old and very, very large. So here we actually have a model of a pliosaur and this is how most of them would have sort of looked. So you can see it's quite stocky but they all would have had this sort of similar body type with a large head and four large flippers. So you did just see the bone which is a limb bone from one of these four. So it's a bit like a modern turtle with the flippers, um, just would have been a lot larger. Now you can see this is a pretty huge tooth and it does have the potential to dwarf that of a T-Rex. Now I won't get into that too much as I'm sure you guys can learn about that in another video um, which we'll talk about later but you can see they are pretty gnarly teeth and they are potentially the largest of any reptile. So if we take a look at the model again here, this one actually has the ability to open its jaw. Now the pliosaur would have had a humongous bite force and it was actually believed that the Weymouth Bay pliosaur would have had a bite force of up to nearly 50,000 newtons, which would have almost been enough to bite through a car. They also had some interesting sensory apparatus. A large number of foramina litter the snout and a parietal eye sits further back on the top of the skull. The exact purpose of this apparatus is unknown, although it has been suggested that the extra foramina may have aided in their hunting abilities. There is a range of fossil evidence showing that pliosaurs ate plesiosaurs, ichthyosaurs and other large reptiles. None of these would be particularly easy to hunt, so any advantage would have been highly beneficial. It is believed, like with most marine animals, that they would have exhibited some form of countershading on their skin. So countershading is a colour pattern that can be seen on creatures like whales, sharks and dolphins, for example. It is a characteristic camouflage pattern demonstrated with a light colour on the animal's underside, which is designed to blend in with the sky as you look up, and a darker colour for the rest of the body, which is designed to blend in with the surrounding environment. We sadly do not fully understand these creatures, so we don't have full evidence about their eye structures or even how they hear, even how they swam is still a very much debated issue. One theory by author Max Hawthorne proposes the following motion. Until about 20 years ago, it was believed that they laid eggs. However, it is now believed that they gave birth to live young, like the other marine reptiles of their time. However, we don't actually have any direct evidence of this either way. You may notice some similarities between pliosaurs and plesiosaurs. That is because they are related and are, if you like, a sister lineage. A key early example is the Yorkshire pliosaur. This animal has a larger, more predatory head than the plesiosaurs of the time, but nothing like the larger skulled monsters of the late Jurassic. Interestingly, the name pliosaur translates to more lizard or more lizard-like. Now this name was given by Richard Owen, who believed them to be more closely related to the saurians than plesiosaurs were. These animals are still very much of an enigma. As top of the food chain predators, their remains are fairly few and far between, with very few complete or nearly complete skeletons ever found. These include Plyosaurus rossicus from Russia and Suchicosaurus from Colombia. Even then, these have been from such drastically different specimens that they aren't particularly useful for reconstruction of these other discoveries. As mentioned, a general body form can be established but their proportions have been seen to vary. There are so many other variations that have been observed in the specimens that have been discovered that it's a challenge to make concrete claims about new finds. The skulls have been seen to be more elongated or more brutish, larger or smaller temporal openings, teeth patterns that vary, teeth size and shape often showing differences. A lot of this has been left to the experts to make up and work out the other pieces. 
This has often caused confusion and a lot of these animals have been reclassified and reclassified. Having existed for so long as a species group and being such a formidable predator, you may wonder what drove them to extinction. And although that is also undecided like much with pliosaurs, it is believed to be due to the rise in competition from mosasaurs, an incredibly agile hunter, that may have had advantages in the ever-changing oceans over the pliosaur body form. Our hope is that with more discoveries being made, we'll be able to learn more and more about these creatures. Thank you for watching. That's all we've got for you today from the Etches Collection. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more, and hopefully we'll see you next time.